so we've all got a taste of what this distribution does. First, I'd like to pass the microphone uh, over to Clay here. And Clay is actually running Linux Mint on a regular basis, and he's had experience with uh, all the major releases for the past uh, uh, past few releases. So uh, first, I'd like to get your impressions of what you think about uh, Linux Mint 15 that's just come out, and what you think some of its strengths are, and, uh, well, just just fill me up all your info here. Um, really, I think in terms of uh, comparing it to uh, early releases, or uh, even in terms of uh, comparing it to its cousin, Ubuntu, um, I, I feel like Mint 15 is probably one of the most stable, one of the most reliable um, versions of Linux that I've used, or one of the uh, distributions of Linux that I've used. Um, hardware support and driver support is superior to anything I've used in the past. Um, I, like I said, I, just, I feel like it's probably one of the fastest, most stable releases I've used. And I don't have, you know, extremely ballsy hardware or anything like that. Uh, I've got just a, a real basic uh, dual-core Asus laptop that I'm running it on, and it supported everything out of the box 100%. Webcam, sound, you name it. Everything just worked. Okay, that's... Yeah, and that's something that people are always looking for when they're trying out a Linux distribution, is uh, stability has always been a major factor for people, especially for me. Um, now, uh, I personally like the Linux Mint 13, and, uh, you know, it has a long-term support where this does not. Now, uh, how would you say this compares to Linux Mint 13, and uh, would you say this is a better release than the long-term release, or what are your impressions on that? Personally, I think this is a much better release uh, when compared to Linux Mint 13. I know it's nice to have the uh, long-term support, but in reality, when you think about it, the OS you're using, as long as they're updating it, you're getting long-term support. Uh, there, there's no real reason for the LTS schedule anymore. Um, un unless you're running something like a server where you're not updating anything uh, except for core files, um, it, it just makes more sense to me to run Mint 15, uh, not only for the, the hardware and driver support, like I said, uh, which has been phenomenal, uh, anything I plug into it, it immediately picks up, uh, including the Epson printer I tried to plug in earlier. It said, hey, here's the drivers. We'll go ahead and install that for you. Would you like to share it? That was it. There was no trying to find PPD files or, you know, do I need to go download this .deb file or whatever. It just picked it right up and ran with it. All right. So you actually like the... Um the new driver manager that this brings to the table. Yes. And so it'll actually just get those drivers for you without any hassles. And, you know, that sounds like a wonderful feature. Now, something else that um, has been mentioned, a lot of people are kind of angry with uh, Ubuntu right now because because Wubi support is no longer available. And uh, earlier, uh, Matthew and I were talking about this, so I'm going to go ahead and pass the microphone over to you uh, because I had some questions about uh, Wubi. Now, it's my understanding that what Wubi is doing is it's creating uh, what, like a logical partition, like a virtual machine would do. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's more of a virtual drive, exactly like your uh, uh, virtual box client would create. And basically, it puts itself inside of a folder that you can designate the size, I believe, up to about 30 gigs. And then you install the system to that drive, and then it automatically places a, um, a, boot, uh, a boot flag in the Windows bootloader. So when you boot up the system, you can point the Windows bootloader to that directory and boot off of it and run it on native hardware, even though it's installed inside of Windows. Now, what about performance? Because uh, that is, you know, that's one thing a lot of people uh, would you know, be concerned with. Now, uh, when, now, what would you say, would you say there's a performance difference between using Wubi or actually installing this on a partition on your hard drive with a, you know, with its own little swap space? Uh, there is a uh, decrease in disk performance. Uh, performance with your uh, hardware such as CPU and GPU are still the same, but your disk 
read-write speeds are significantly reduced. Um, if you're using a conventional uh, mechanical hard drive, this is very noticeable. But if you're on a solid-state drive, it's probably not significant enough to really uh, notice that much. But there is a difference, and uh, if you can afford uh, to sacrifice that performance for that convenience, then go for it. But if performance is really what you're aiming for, then a native install is probably a better way to go. Okay, now, um, the, now I just gleaned that there's some really good news for some of you uh, beginners out there that want to try Linux, and you want to try uh, the route where you don't have to make any partitions on your hard drive, that sort of thing. There's now an installer you can download, and I think uh, Clay was telling me about that earlier. Go ahead. Yes, it's uh, it's called Mint for Win. So if you're Googling it, it's Mint, the number four, Win, W-I-N. And it functions uh, much like Whoopi does, like Matthew was just talking about, uh, with one exception. You don't actually have to download uh, any other files except for this one executable. So you don't have to go out and get a, a, an ISO or an image of Linux or uh, anything like that. You just download this executable, you run it, and it does everything in the background for you. So that would be a nice convenience for people to uh, give Linux a spin on their system without having to you know, do anything destructive to the hard drive. My only question is, would this, let's say I just bought a Windows 8 PC, okay, and I've got UEFI locked out, and uh, I wanted to try and run Linux on this computer. How is that going to affect somebody like me if I'm going to try this Mint for Win? Um, well, like Matthew was talking about, it actually puts a boot flag in where... Um, where after you get past the whole UEFI uh, structure, you, you've already kind of passed that key along from Windows to uh, the BIOS or you know, whatever fancy name they're calling it this month. Um, they, they, they seem to change. It's, it's, it's EFI, it's UEFI, it's BIOS, it's this, it's that. Uh, they like just bringing up crazy names, I guess. I don't know. But once you once you've already gotten past that point, there's really nothing else that you've got to do. So there's you don't have to go in and disable uh, secure boot. You don't have to do anything like that. It's already gotten past that. So what it's doing is it's reading that boot flag to open uh, whatever's in this folder, this logical drive uh, where Linux Mint is stored. It's basically chain loading it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this sounds like a pretty sound solution for anybody who really wants to give uh, Linux Mint a try. I mean, they're they're making this available, easily available to people. And not only that, folks, Linux Mint was the first distribution when I made the switch to Linux. I says, okay, I'm ready to, you know, try Linux again. You know, um, I I put the disk in my computer. Everything worked right out of the box. I've never seen a Linux distribution do that before. And Linux is now matured to a point where it is truly desktop ready. And it has all these wonderful applications. Um, you know, uh, I've almost divorced myself of all Windows applications. Except, well, I've got two that I'm still running in Wine. But, uh, but this, is, this is a really good desktop. And I found... Linux Mint to be really easy for somebody like me to pick up with all the years of experience I have from using Windows. It really is not hard to, uh, you know, because you have that air of familiarity, you know, you still have the file menus and, I mean, all the programs are just as easy to figure out as you would if you were to um, download a new Windows program and hit that learning curve on it. So you have that air of familiarity right there. So that's an added plus. And additionally, you have the support of the community. And if you can't find the answer on Linux Mint forums, all you have to do is just say, Ubuntu, how do I do this? In a Google search, and you'll find the answer. Because, I mean, anything that, you know, um, anything that can be done on Ubuntu pretty much can be done on Linux Mint. At least that's been my experience anyway. So uh, you got, you've got a really strong community to back you up. 
Uh, I give, uh, I, I definitely give my thumbs up for Linux Mint. I, I really appreciate their contribution to the community because with every release, they're just putting out, they're just getting better and better and better. So, uh, you know, uh, I can't sing Linux Mint enough praises for uh, what they're doing. Uh, what say you, Clay? I, I would completely agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I, I started using Linux back in 1997, uh, back when it was actually Mandrake, not Mandriva. I remember Mandrake. Uh, yeah, you could actually buy yeah. a big box with four CDs in it and a book is staples <laughs> for $179. Um, and it's just been, it's, it's really been a delight to see uh, an operating system mature uh, in the way that it has. And it, it makes you feel like you're a part of something. You know, when, when you're out on a forum trying to figure out how to do this, you might come across somebody who's posted a similar question, and kind of in the whole Linux spirit, you're just passing that tip along that you learned, and now they've got the answer. So when you said that, you know, it, it's really about the community and the assistance that they provide, not only, you know, on Ubuntu forums or uh, Linux Mint forums, but even on Google+. Plus. I mean, there is just a plethora of information out there. If you can't find the answer in one place, uh, look a little bit further. I guarantee you'll find it. What say you, Matthew? Well, I think Linux Mint is a very mature and very professional desktop environment, um, which makes it very attractive. Uh, when I first uh, got introduced to Linux, I started on Ubuntu. And Basically, the first thing that attracted me to Linux World was from his fusion. I saw all that cool, fancy stuff, and I wanted it. So, you know, ah, that, that's, what brought, that's what brought me over to the Linux world. But I guess as I've, I've matured, or as operating systems themselves have matured, uh, distributions like Linux Mint have become more attractive to me because of the level of professionalism that they uh, introduce. And uh, it's, it's just a... That type of desktop is a desktop that you can live with every day, um, and that's what makes it a very uh, an attractive distribution to go to. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, thank you, uh, both of you, uh, for joining me, uh, Matthew and uh, uh, let me read you that closing again. <laughs> I, I got hung up there. All right, and there you have it. Uh, Clay and Matthew, thank you for joining me uh, in uh, today's uh, podcast uh, after the review. Um, some some really good insight we got here, folks. got to try out Linux Mint if you haven't uh, done that. And if you're new to Linux, you can always get great support here. Um, and I, am, I know I answer a lot of questions here on my YouTube channel. Clay, do you have a YouTube channel as well? Uh, I do, but it com uh, it's comprised of two videos of my dog, uh, one being chased <laughs> by an oven mitt. Um, if, if anybody has any Linux Mint questions, I don't have all of the answers, but I'll be more than happy to help you find them. So please come find me on Google+, throw me in your circles. You know, I, I will help you as much as I can. And pretty much that is exactly what the community is like. You know, um, people are always willing to step up to the plate and uh, help out another person and that sort of thing. And you also have that on IRC as well. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know I, I've never seen a better community online than the Linux community as a whole. You know, because, uh, you know, there are so many people out there that are willing to give out support. And... Uh, you know, the forums have been fantastic as well, and I just can't thank the community enough. And, you know, that's one reason why I do shows here as well, because, you know, uh, it's my way of giving something back to what I've really received from the community. Well, thank you all of you for being part of the show today. And all of you, go to LinuxMint.com right now and get your free copy today. Mm -hmm.